Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about browser isolation in the Microsoft stack, uh, specifically Mic Microsoft Defender Application Guard. Remember, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button down below for our channel. So let's talk about the benefits of browser isolation. Uh, browser isolation is a proactive way to protect against uh, browser vulnerabilities, data exfiltration, JavaScript redirects. It also reduces the attack vectors of malware and other viruses by preventing downloads onto the end endpoint. Um, it also augments your existing web gateway in, uh, infrastructure. So if you already are doing um, application gateways or reverse proxies as a way to reduce the malware in the company, uh, then browser isolation will uh, augment it. It'll uh, build on top of it. Um, and then uh, the last two benefits, you know, I think this one is huge. URL filtering lists are never complete. Uh, if you've gone down that path before and said, my employees can only visit these websites, um, you've usually turned off that feature after a week of implementing it because the internet is so wide, um, it's impossible to get a, a complete list of URLs that you wanna filter. So, um, and then the last one is that there are uh, multiple browser isolation techniques. Um, I think that this uh, Defender Application Guard is a better experience than some of the other products out there that use remote browser isolation. So let's talk about how, um, first let's talk about requirements because this is a pretty beefy uh, application um, and it's not gonna be for every, every environment out there. So first off, you do need to be at 1803 or higher for your pro edition. Uh, if you're running home or enterprise or uh, education, there are different version numbers you have to be at. But since pro is, is um, pretty common out there, I listed the pro version. Also, your CPU has to support virtualization. Um, this is because the technology uses the hypervisor to spin up a, um, a basically a, a, a virtual browser. Um, so you will need 64-bit, uh, and it'll need a minimum of four cores. You'll need a minimum of eight gigs of RAM and about five gigs of free storage. So you can see it's, you know, this is probably a newer laptop, uh, 2020 laptop or, or uh, newer uh, to get these requirements. All right, so what is Application Guard and how does it work? Um, so if you look at the top of these pillars, this is where the user is interacting, right? These are applications, Office, Edge, um, you know, Solitaire, all of those. And as the application goes down the stack, they have to ultimately get down to an operating system. Applica uh, Defender Application Guard it acts as a virtualized container. So it virtualizes a browser instance, right? With the kernel and the, the platform services um, and kind of keeps everything inside of this one little virtual sandbox. Uh, this, all of these run on top of the device hypervisor. Um, and that's why you're required to have a processor that can uh, support uh, virtualization. So if you're deploying to a VDI environment, uh, th this is not going to be for you, it won't work. Um, also, as you test this solution, just understand your virtual machines that you would typically test on before rolling out, uh, they're gonna run into problems with the hypervisor as well. So how does, how does the browser know what to do once you've enabled Application Guard? Well, it all starts with what URL the employee is trying to get to. So if the employee types in a URL into Microsoft Edge, uh, it's going to check whether this is on the allowed list or not. And I said, you don't have to maintain a large list of, of URL filtering, and that's true. You do need to specify what are the allowed URLs. 
So if this URL is on that allow list, it's going to render in Microsoft Edge uh, normally, right? It might I'll open up a tab um, that's not part of this virtualized environment and allow you to go to whatever website. Um, as they browse, they're going to type in more websites or maybe a link links from an internal site to an external vendor. At any point, you go to a URL that is not on that allow list. Uh, Microsoft, uh, the Defender Application Guard is going to spin up a new version of Microsoft Edge. Um, and it's going to be in this virtualized container. Uh, and it's going to render the website as if it was um, untrusted. So uh, you'll be in that virtualized container until you either close out or you uh, type in a URL that brings you back into a trusted, uh, trusted URL. All right, so um, I, I'm demo heavy. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to show what this looks like deploying um, through Endpoint Manager. You can deploy this through SCCM, uh, group policy, uh, you know, you can do it with logon scripts, but because Endpoint Manager is, um, you know, the, the greatest thing for deploying to cloud first uh, devices, I chose to do the demo with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So first place we go is into our devices. Uh, and then we go down to our configuration policies. So I have a generic one right here that uh, just requires the device to have Defender for Endpoint enabled, Smart Screen, and a, a few other endpoint protections. So for us to create this policy, we create the profile. We're going to do Win 10 or later. And then we're going to select the, from the list of templates. So this template is under the endpoint protection. And remember, a template is nothing more than just a set of configuration values that you're wanting to push to the endpoint. So under the endpoint protection, we'll give this a name. Uh, application guard. Uh, great. So now, because this template is an endpoint protection template, we can see all of those endpoint uh, configurations that we can set. So the top one is the one we're interested in, Microsoft Defender Application Guard. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable it for Edge. Um, it's going to ask us a lot of these little configuration questions, and I'll try to go over all of them. So clipboard behavior. If we're concerned about data exfiltration, uh, we can ratchet this down and block copy and paste between the host OS and the browser itself. Um, if you know we're not concerned about uh, exfiltration through copy and pasting, um, then we might want to ease the the pain of of our users a little bit and allow them to copy from the PC into the browser. Or we can be very lax and we can allow copy paste to and from the browser. Um, because we're going to allow copy and paste, we can then configure, do we want text images, text and images? Again, I'm not going to uh, ratchet this down for data exfiltration. I want to demonstrate it's uh, ability to prevent malware um, and prevent those JavaScript redirects that get our users in trouble. Um, now I can go ahead and I can block all external content, um, but that's not what I want to do. I'm going to use group policy to push out the list of trusted uh, URLs. So I'm not going to configure block all. Uh, it gives me the option to prevent uh, uh, printing from this virtual browser. I'm actually going to allow printing from the virtual, uh, virtual browser. 
Um, and I'm going to say, yeah, you know, people can take those websites that are not trusted and still print things from them. The next one is about collecting logs. So if I have a well-orchestrated Seam, I can pump these logs uh, of my users into Seam uh, and look for any patterns that, that I might find um, to be malicious. The retained gener user-generated data, these would be cookies, um, auto uh, type ahead, autocomplete, that type of stuff. So I'm gonna allow the retention of that data. And then because this is a virtualized browser, um, I, it, we have to wonder if there, or we have to set the setting for graphic accelerator, right? Um, all virtualized or hypervisors and virtualized hardware, uh, this graphics accelerator is, is a, a key concern. So I'm not going to uh, enable it because if you are using Netflix um, or if you're using a you know like a 3D online 3D modeling software, uh, I I don't want to uh, to to allow that in my environment. And then the last one is downloading files to the host system. So this is where you know if we want to enable it, we're going to allow those uh, malicious files to come through. Um, or I can set it not configured uh, and prevent those files from downloading to the host system. Now, if I do enable this, I probably want to turn on Smart Screen. Defender Smart Screen is the utility or the, the product offering from Microsoft that uh, scans the files on download and also blocks any unverified download from executing. All right. So go next. Uh, I am going to assign this to my uh, EMS group. Remember, you know, the use of in uh, device point the endpoint management requires that EMS license. So here at Netwoven, we all do the licensing group licensing. So A Z underscore L I C, and then what the license is for. So I know that anybody in this EMS bucket is going to have that, their EMS license and be able to get that push. Um, we're not going to touch the rules, but basically if you wanted to say only assign the profile if the OS version or sorry, OS edition was, um, you know, Win 10 Pro, uh, professional education, those, you could do that here. But in this case, I'm not going to ratchet down the, the, um, the policy or profile. All right, everything looks good. Now let's create. And this will take a little bit to propagate to your uh, devices, right? Um, there's an SLA with Endpoint Manager, so it's, it is gonna take a few minutes to get down there. Uh, but once you get down there, you'll be able to see on the device that under Windows Features, the Microsoft Defender Application Guard is enabled now. Um, in order to enable it fully, you do have to do a reboot. So it does have to reboot the device. Uh, and then once the device is rebooted, um, you should be able to see it inside of Edge. So if you go Edge colon slash slash Application Guard Internals, uh, you'll see the status, um, whether it's enabled, uh, any type of, of host information, so container persistence, proxy. Um, in this example that I'm in, I'm on a virtual machine, so my virtualization is not supported, and I get the big little red X. This is helpful for debugging one-off uh, cases. Um, so if somebody says, oh, you know, my... Uh, my browser doesn't have the um, the application guard. You know, how do I check it out? Just have them go here and look at the container status. If it's act enabled, pending, disabled, um, that'll help you figure out what's wrong. Uh, and then ultimately, to use this, um, your users would, uh, you know, de depending on their their um, uh, preference. 
under the three dots, we'd have a new and a uh, application guard. So all the new windows that open up will be using that version. It's very similar to like in private browsing. So in private browsing is a dark, um, a dark banner and the application guard version of it is a orange banner. Cool. So I think that's all I had for everybody today. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button um, and we'll notify you of future videos as they come out. If you have any other questions about uh, endpoint protection or device uh, browser isolation, please reach out to us at uh, info at netwoven.com. Uh, we'll be sure to reach back. Thanks. Have a great day.